What's up, Well That's Good fam? Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. I hope everyone's having a great Wednesday. Y'all, it's about to get better because today we have a very special guest. This is not his first or second time. This is his third time on the Well That's Good podcast. And I'm so thankful for every time he's been on with a new book called Undistracted, Capture Your Purpose and Rediscover Your Joy. We have Bob Goff back with us. Welcome back to the podcast, Bob. Hey, thanks a million, Sadie. It's so fun to see and connect. I'm just always cheering for you guys. Gosh, thank you so much. Well, I'm excited to have you back. And know I've already asked you um, the question of what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given. And I've actually probably asked you twice. So for the third time, I'll just ask you, Bob, just give us a good piece of advice. I know that you are absolutely full of it. Yeah, here's, uh, I remember last time we talked about it, remember it was 100% kindness and 0% drama. I remember you sent me something. Yes. Still got it, girl. I just love that thing. Here's a thought uh, for now. Instead of being distracted by what's going on around you, take a moment and figure out what's going on within you. So I think mm-hmm. a lot of our time we're like figuring out what's your position on this and this and this and this. And these are all good things. They're not bad, but they become bad if they distract you from figuring out what God's doing inside of you. Yeah, that's so good. Come on. That's great. And I know that distraction has been a big topic of conversation for you lately with your new book, Undistracted. And the last two books were about love and they were so good. If you haven't read Love Does or Everybody Always, stop what you're doing right Right now, go order three books at this moment and order all three of Bob's amazing books. But what led you to want to shift gears a little bit and talk about being undistracted? What was the heartbeat behind that? Yeah, I think it's because I'm uniquely uh, qualified to like be distracted. Like as a flaming <laughs> Enneagram seven, like that's mm-hmm. where we live. Like everything in yeah. our mind is a carnival. It's just like, yeah. you're just uh, doing the coin toss. You're like trying to get a goldfish. You're like, <laughs> your mind is just like constantly distracted. And I couldn't find a book that helped me focus. Yeah. Uh, and so you kind of write the books like you do. You write the book you need. Uh, yeah. I, uh, went out and watched this glorious sunrise in San Diego Bay. It was like one of those just moments. And I just came back having started the day so well. I But we've got a little dock behind the house. I got back to the dock. I went up, I lit a fire and uh, another boat like mine pulled in a little while later and it looked identical. I got the binoculars out because it's on the other side of the bay. It's my boat because no I, hadn't, I hadn't tied it up. <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted. So it isn't always bad things to distract you. Like no brains, no headache. But it isn't. Sometimes it's really beautiful things that distract you. That you see, like you take your eyes off of what's going on in your life because you're so distracted by something beautiful that's happening in someone else's. Now the bad version of that is comparison. And God never compares what he creates. So what you need to do is to put a little truth and a little bit of obedience over anything that's distracting you. Oh, get this, Sadie. This will be really helpful for you in your adventures. An anaconda. I want you to picture that without freaking out. This snake is 25 (laughs) feet long. It's three feet around. That's a lot of snake, you know, even in Louisiana. Uh, And if you have an anaconda wrap around you, you could try to bite it, but it wouldn't even feel it because it's wrapped around you and you got about one minute this is what an anaconda is uniquely susceptible to one drop of alcohol on its nose i'm not kidding really yeah one drop of alcohol it would like let you go and slither away all 25 feet and think about what's distracting you and what it's uniquely susceptible to is truth and obedience so anacondas it's a drop of alcohol for for all the fears that you have speak a little truth over it be obedient to some of those truths and so i just think if we're susceptible people that's the message of the scriptures that we're susceptible to everything uh i want to say i want to deal with that susceptibility by putting a little truth i'm not saying positive affirmations you're swell you're nice you're happy but to just say who god says we are Speak a little truth over that. Then be obedient to that. Like some of the things that maybe you're listening and distracted by what other people are saying about you. I'm like, nah, I'm out of there. 
That's so good, man. That's so good. And I love how you already brought up just the difference in biblical truths and positive affirmation, because I think that's something that we should see the difference in that, you know, it's one thing to just puff yourself up and say, I'm awesome. I'm great. I got it going on. And that'll maybe encourage you for an, about an hour. But then, you know, when something hurts you or when you get distracted by an ugly comment, it's those truths that you come back to that keep you rooted. You know what's helped so, me a lot is to do this a little bit of a major- matrix. Number one, I try to say, what's the most generous explanation for whatever's Mm. distracting me? Somebody who says something mean, somebody blows you off, kind of ghosts you or something. What's Mm. the most generous explanation? Then what's the most realistic explanation for that? Uh, Mm -hmm. And then what's the most optimistic? And so I'll give you an example. Somebody you send an email to and they don't respond. Maybe the most generous explanation, there was somebody I hadn't written to from before there was computers. (laughs) It's a family member. And I've sent this email and I didn't hear anything back. You know what my most generous explanation was? Maybe I have the wrong email address. And then I said, what's the most realistic explanation? Uh, Maybe there's some hurts there. I've got a couple. Uh, Maybe they do as well. Sometimes if somebody hasn't spoken well of you, that there's some unresolved stuff and a big chunk of truth in there. Something for me to learn. Like I maybe need to own a little bit of that and and then change some of my ways. And then what's the most optimistic thing? And here's the most optimistic with the person that I emailed. Maybe they'll email me back tomorrow. Um, Maybe most optimistic in the painful words that might have been spoken about you to say, maybe I can change. Maybe with Mm. Christ's help, I could find not a better version of me, but a more accurate reflection of him. Wow, that's great, Bob. That's so good. Um, One thing you talk about in the book is kind of being willing and able to stop in those moments that you need to stop and reset, hit the reset button of your life. And that's a hard thing to do. You know, that's a hard thing to do for most people. I think it does require a moment of stopping, not being distracted to stop and look at yourself in the mirror long enough. Um, You know, for the... I mean, the most honest version of ourself, nobody wants to do that because that brings up embarrassment or shame or we feel guilty or we feel like not enough or whatever. But in those moments, whenever you know it's time to stop, how do you get past those feelings of um, that embarrassment or that fear to even deal with who you are in order to stop long enough to become who you want to be? Yeah. So uh, everybody has these stories that we make up when we're little little Bobby Goff, if you met me when I was eight, you'd see first impression, that's a lot of freckles. Um, (laughs) And then (laughs) you don't see all this gray hair you see right now, just flaming red hair and a lot of freckles. But little Bobby Goff had a couple weird things happened and you did too and everybody I know did. And I made up a story that everyone was going to eventually abandon me. I will be Mm. left all alone. Uh, And it's because I didn't have the emotional tools to deal with it. And so we do that. We make up stories. And then here's the insidious part. We make up rules to support the stories. So my rule Mm. uh, is that don't get close to anybody. Uh, Why? Mm. Because the story is that everybody's going to eventually blow me off. Um, Mm. And then these rules that were actually scaffolding to keep your little eight-year-old life together, now you're 20 or 30 and you don't have any deep friendships. It's because there's an underlying story that Mm. everybody's going to leave. And so you make up a rule Mm. that I'm not going deep with anybody. And so you spend all your time in your friendships snorkeling rather than shipwreck diving. Like you keep it in the top two feet of the relationship because you're afraid you're going to leave. And so people then have this impression of you, Sadie, fun, happy, go for it, all that. Or Bob, the balloon guy. Uh, Nobody's first thought is Bob super insecure. But I am here to tell you, I am super insecure. (laughs) I just tried to keep it together. What little Bobby Goff decided, he'll be funny. So if he's just fun then you don't have to. And here's the beautiful part that Jesus invites us to. He gets to say, you don't have to be that. Let's revisit the rules. Let's revisit the story and say, was it ever true? Mm -hmm. Or maybe if it was true then, it doesn't need to be true now. And that's the promise of the hope of scripture that you just get to like take a hard look and that Jesus is there to like walk with you through that. So if we could uncover the story, figure out the rule. And then as people say some hard things, things, 
to you to say, okay, what's the most generous thing? Even when somebody says something lame, if you could go to the thought bubble, you know, I've, has anybody ever told you the way to memorize somebody's name is to see it in sparklers in their forehead? Yes. That's just super lame. <laughs> um, but if you could picture a thought bubble from somebody that's saying yeah. something super lame, their thought bubble says, I'm being super helpful right now. <laughs> like when they uh, like a word of correction that's totally unnecessary. They're like, I am really helping Sadie out right now. I'm being yeah. a boss. <laughs> yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is just be a little bit more kind about yeah. what my assumption is about where they're coming from. That they didn't Man, mean I... to be mean. They just be more yeah. generous with your explanations. Guys, let me tell you about an amazing EC solution to nourish your body and make it well with all the things that you need in a very simple way. Athletic Greens is what I'm talking about. It's a health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really, really simple. And we all need a little simplicity in life, am I right? Christian and I really share a passion for health and wellness. And when we you know, started this podcast, even when he started his podcast, 4 Eight Men, that was one thing that he really wanted to devote his time to, to faith and fitness. And so we had to make sure that we're maintaining health and fitness and all the things because this is what we're preaching to the world. It's good for your body. Ever since we got married, pursuing health together became actually a lot easier. Um, um, and I want to tell you another way to make things easier, not just, you know, having an accountability partner, but also what you put into your body. And Athletic Greens makes it so easy to help make nutrition very simple. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a superfood product that simplifies the path to better nutrition by giving you one thing with all the best things. Their AG1 product has really helped us in pursuit of living healthy lives. I tried Athletic Greens because I heard a lot about it. Honestly, I saw it everywhere, AG1, and I was encouraged to try it. And honestly, it's awesome. It has everything that you need in just one scoop and I felt like I was really supporting and loving my body whenever I drank it. You can drink it first thing when you wake up. You can drink it later on after a workout. Whatever helps you feel the most energized. For me, energy is a huge thing because I don't drink any caffeine and so it's kind of hard to get energy sometimes but I've found the best way to get energy is through vitamins like vitamin D, vitamin B, all these things but AG1 has tons of vitamins and all the nutrition that you need so instead of having all these pills, I can just drink one drink of AG1 one and it gets the job done. So to be the most healthy mom, the most healthy wife, the most healthy leader I can be, I need to make sure I'm fueling my body. And AG1 makes it simple. It's also um, not a super powdery taste, which I think that you kind of expect from these things. Even though it is an athletic greens, it's actually really good, it's smooth, and it's easy to drink. So AG1 has all the good stuff in it um, with just one simple scoop. One simple scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients like a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and more in one convenient daily serving. The ingredients in a scoop of AG1 work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet. It supports energy and focus, helps you with your gut and health and digestion, and it supports a healthy immune system. So you can basically replace a bunch of products or pills with one healthy delicious drink. Christian and I are both big fans of Athletic Greens and love shouting it out because it's a simple way to be healthy. It's lifestyle friendly as well. So whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, any of those things. And it also contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while also tasting great. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Again, just simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. That's so good. That's so good. And it's so true. Like people look at other people and they have this perspective of who they are based off of just what they see. But there's so much to people that is unseen. And honestly, even when you just said that about me, the truth is today, literally today, I had a conversation with someone and she looked at me, she said, you know, you just appear to everyone like you're so strong, but I know that some things have to hurt you. And I said to her, they do hurt me. And then she said, well, why don't you share that? And I said, well, 
because you never know who's going to leave you. And I don't, it's easier to not share because then I don't feel like I get backstabbed when the person leaves. And I think, and it was just a really real honest conversation. And I think, you know, when people see me, they say, oh, she's, she has so many friends. She's everybody's friend. And the truth is I, I will come and say I am everyone's friend, but it's really hard for me to let someone be my friend. You know, I will be there for everyone, but it's hard for me to let someone be there for me because when I open my heart in that way, then you're scared. Your heart's going to get hurt. But okay. the truth is, even in saying that, and in saying that I am scared of those things and those things do hurt, every time I've opened my heart, the friendships are worth it. You know, the the beauty behind all that fear that you have is the beauty of life. Like it's it's the joys of life. It's the celebration things. So I'm glad that you said that because I do think that people, you know, might look at me and have a certain perspective. And I don't want people to think that those things are easy for me just because I appear strong or friendships are easy for me just because I have friends. Um, it's still hard, you know? And so I love that you're speaking to these, you speak to such hard things with such a joy wrapped around them. And um, I'm really thankful for that because as you were talking, I was feeling convicted because I'm like, man, I hope people know that about me too. And I want to share some of those unseen things as well. So, And we're actually kind of just one safe friend away from making some progress. You know, yeah. like think of one safe friend. You got dibs on Christian. He he robbed the bank and <laughs> dibs on you. Totally. And But to just have, uh, then to say, could I do that outside of my marriage or the closest relationships? Can I add one more safe friend? And even a better question is, can I be that safe friend for somebody else? It's good. You know, can I just be the safe spot, the wide part of the road where somebody can come and unload something that they just don't need to carry around anymore? Yeah. Um, and so I think for you and I, uh, this idea of to say that's a really good thing to do. If you've ever seen somebody who had their luggage break, let's say they had a rolling duffel bag and they're, mm -hmm. they've got it by the handle and they're going down the street and then the stupid handle breaks. So what you need to do is you carry the duffel bag, like hugging it. And so <laughs> as you're walking down the road, you can tell there's a person that doesn't have a handle on it. And I'm like, yeah. this will preach. Like we need to get, <laughs> I don't want that's when I good. meet you to have you have the big duffel bag of all my unresolved stuff that I've got yeah. my arms around because you'd be like Bob I feel like there's something that's come between us and it's yeah. all the stuff <laughs> that I don't have a handle on and so what yeah. I'm trying to do is a little at a time get a handle on that whoa that's a that's a whoa that's good moment that's so good I love your analogies it's awesome and I think like sometimes we think whenever we face a disappointment in life or whenever things don't go well that's a massive setback and I love how you wrote in the book some people let disappointments turn into distractions um, you say don't be the kind of person who falls for that trap stop thinking about how unfair life is and turn the letdowns into lessons and the disappointments into determination and I'm like man that that is so good somebody needs to write that on their mirror like today. Someone needs to put that as a banner over their life because so many people just sit in those disappointments and it's so true. Let them become a distraction. So can you speak to that a little bit about how disappointments don't actually have to be a setback, but can actually be almost a setup in your life? Oh, I like that. Yeah. I'm just thinking like a setback doesn't need to be a campsite. Like, so yeah, you had something, it got really wonky you wish it wouldn't. Uh, there's enough truth in there for me to say, how can I grow in this? Um, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you need to put yourself around people that are constantly trying to teach you how to grow because that can be mm -hmm. really uh, tiring. Um, what mm -hmm. I want to do is influence people. I don't want to control them. And that's mm -hmm. a really subtle but important distinction. Um, we uh, swung through the South uh, on a little bus tour. We tried as an experiment and uh, it was, we had so much fun. Sweet Maria came and we went from oh, place awesome. to place and, um, and the, uh, uh, we uh, got to some place and there was a guy that really, really needed to talk about something. I could tell the person organizing it wanted me to be elsewhere, but this guy really needed to talk about something. And the guy organized it came over he grabbed me by the shoulders like physically and started moving me away from him and I'm thinking in my thought bubble what hospital do you want to go to <laughs> taking baby steps and he said Bob I think I know why you're here 
I think I know what you came to accomplish. And you could do 10 times more of that if you move 40 feet to your left. I'd be like, mm -hmm. let's go. But yeah. the fact that we try to get controlled, like we push back against control. And so yeah. what I want us to do is to just say, what if our role in people's lives were to point to beautiful things, like to just yeah. point to the beauty of the scriptures, point to the beauty of what might be possible, the beauty of dependence, but move away from manipulation and control. Um, yeah, I, I think Jesus leads people to Jesus. I don't think we lead people to Jesus. What we it's try great. to do is influence them. And the best way to do it is to do what you're doing. Just be a great example of that, an authentic example. Because as soon mm -hmm. as I'm like happy Bob, like balloon boy, like I'm bouncing yeah. out like Tigger everywhere. If I'm not feeling that, then I've made myself a caricature of who I really yeah. am. I'm just like being the guy everybody expects me to be. And what yeah. if we just came with palms up and to say, man I, there's a ton to be joyful let me just get for real is this can we just agree this is a safe place for a couple minutes yeah like this isn't going out on twitter and all that like can we just like let's just decide communally we're going to make this a safe place uh, and great. if somebody blows it and doesn't make it safe it doesn't mean the new rule is that people can't be trusted it means that somebody's still learning uh, yeah. i've got stuff to learn here's the thing they have to learn All right, friends, we all know our favorite fashionistas and influencers do not do it alone, and neither should you. If you need a hand finding pieces that make you look and feel good, then Stitch Fix has got you covered. Whether you need a fun outfit for a special date night or even just a cozy loungewear for a night in, Stitch Fix can help you refresh your look. You can schedule a fix with an expert stylist that will send you five pieces that fit your style, size, and price range with no subscription required. Y'all, I'm just gonna stop here and say, this sounds pretty great, huh? Keep what you like and return the rest. It's really that easy. Or maybe you do love the experience of shopping, but you don't want to deal with the endless new browsing and scrolling. Then you can check out Stitch Fix Freestyle. It's an online shop built just for you. It's like having your very own clothing store, which I'm sure we all dreamt of as a kid. So, it's pretty awesome. All you do to get started, you just have to take a style quiz so that Stitch Fix can learn your preferences from your favorite colors to preferred fits and price ranges. So the way that it works for me is I went onto the website, took the styling quiz so that they knew what I liked, and then they sent me a box filled with all of the things that were so cute, like even some jean shorts with a cute top, and also some really great looks to make me feel confident for some Zoom calls for work, and they even know that I'm a sucker for matching pajama sets and they sent me two of the cutest, softest pajama sets that I totally love and would have picked out for myself. It's so fun and it is great because this is tailor-made just for you, pardon the pun, but it's an easy way to get items that are perfect for you and from brands that you trust and love like Madewell and Sanctuary. So it's time to get the looks and emphasize your incredible originality that you feel awesome in. So get started today by filling out your free style quiz at Stitch stitchfix.com slash woe and take advantage of the free shipping and returns. That's stitchfix.com slash woe to try Stitch Fix. That's stitchfix.com slash woe. Yeah, that's great, man. That's so good. It's so grace-filled too. And that's a lot of the theme of what everything you've said is, is just being grace-filled. Like we're so quick to lose that grace. And I, I met this, I had this person in my life one time and she told me that every single day she woke up and she asked God to give her grace for the day. And I thought it was so beautiful. And I've thought about that a, a lot of times since I've talked to her about how just every day waking up and asking God for that grace because that is so needed. And it's so, um, man, you really see how good God is, that he has that endless grace for us, but how short our grace can be for other people. And so I'm so glad that you said that because um, a lot of the things that you say, even if it's a bad thing, you're like, but they're still learning. And even just having that mindset on people is so kind and so good. Um, I wanted to ask you, because you are one of the most interesting people, truly. And I have had the privilege of knowing you and I've, I see maybe more than what some people see who are just follow you on Instagram and you are that person. You do all these crazy things and maybe even some things that people don't see. And to some people, maybe even to you, you might 
think that those are distractions, but also like those things are actually part of what makes you awesome. Like you fly planes and you travel all over and you start schools and you do balloon parades and all this stuff. And so, but you also are very committed to the things that you're committed to. Like you were a lawyer for so long. You do actually start schools all over the place and commit to them and see them come through. And I think that right now, this generation is having a hard time balancing like, okay, I want to be the fun person and I want to travel and do all these things. Um, but they don't want to commit to the things that are maybe their job or maybe that are hard. And so how do you do both so well? Like how do you do the things that are fun and take on new hobbies, but still stay committed to the things that are hard and that you care about that look more like work than like fun? Does that make sense? Yeah, two thoughts came to mind. It's a great question. Uh, but first response, still learning. Like at 63, yeah. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Um, crazy thing, Sadie, we get about 4,000 weeks. Uh, you know, a little more if you eat broccoli and a little less if you eat Pop-Tarts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking That's to you, John true. Luke. Um, but, <laughs> like, what, <laughs> but with this little bit of time that I have left, um, I just want to stay super curious and I want to be obedient to these things. Like these people, like if you want to meet Jesus, he said, this is it. He said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. I was kind of creepy, but you invited me in. I was <laughs> like, I was like naked and you clothed me. I was in jail and you came. Like I was just thinking hungry people, thirsty people, sick people, strange people, naked people, and people in jail. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to do is to just say, what can I learn? Uh, I just hired a guy. Um, he's in San Quentin right now, but we think he's getting out at the next parole board hearing. Wow, and he's been awesome. in for a minute. He started going, growing his dreads out when he went into San Quentin 25 years ago. Sadie, they are Whoa. down to his ankles. That oh brother, my. he has got some dreads. <laughs> We're going to need to get oh a my. middle seat on the plane just to fit his dreads. They are glorious. Uh, well, I've said you're going to be my new body man. Like, where I go, you go. And I, I wrote to the parole board. I said, like, where I go, he goes. Just let him out. He's my new guy. Uh, and I'm just living with that kind of anticipation. And I'm not doing it to be a nice guy. I'm doing it because Jesus said, if you meet them, you'll meet me. And if yeah. you don't find yourself on the way towards hungry, hurting, isolated, lonely, sometimes creepy people, then we're not meeting Jesus. Because uh, yeah. that's where he's always on his way to. And so yeah. this dollop of obedience to say, it's going to be awesome. I mean, we're going to get stopped a lot. Uh, but that which is awesome because I am going to learn a lot from him. Uh, sweet yeah. Marie Goff, she does not go out and do much stuff. He wrote her a letter and said, I've been going to San Quentin for five years teaching these guys every three or, or yeah. learning from these guys more accurately every three or four weeks. Uh, she, he wrote to her and said, will you come and visit me? I know you don't go out and meet a lot of people. And she said, I'm in. So next week we're over there together. No way. <laughs> that's awesome. I that's felt like so this, good. Yes. But that I think that's, again, evidence of Jesus. And so they, in summary to say, um, don't think about doing it across the ocean if you're not willing to do it across the street. Don't tell yeah. me go to the ends of the That's earth great. if you haven't gone to the end of your block. Um, so yeah. let's do that for the people that are near you. And then maybe do these other things, but don't go there trying to fix it, but show up to say, man, what do I learn in this thing? Where Where is it that the next kind of drops going to be and you don't have to wait for something magical i feel like my yeah. faith is really steak and potatoes it's just jesus already <laughs> wrote it down like it's already it's like th there you want to know him read up about it mm -hmm. but then don't just read like say like do something and the crazy yeah, part good. sadie as a seven i want to like ask jesus so how can i help you out <laughs> And he says, I don't need your health. I need your yeah. heart, Bob Goff. I don't need your pithy wow. sayings. What I need is you to be obedient and show up.
It's great. Come on. That is such good advice. I love that obedience. It's like, it's so important. And I love how you talked about you've been going there like every four weeks for years. And I think that commitment, um, what you see from that is you see relationships built. And I think that's why sometimes we struggle to form relationships because we're unwilling to commit to the process of them. Um, or we struggle to, you know, see great outcomes of things because we struggle to commit. And your commitment to certain things has built such beautiful relationships and and just cause some incredible work to be done around the world. And you literally have relationships all around the world, but I know you have relationships on your own street too. And that's a really powerful thing. Uh, I love how you talked about your relationship with Jesus being just, uh, what, steak and potatoes, how you said it. Yeah. And I loved in the book you talked about this because I've said this so much too. Um, You talked about how not everybody has to have a quote unquote quiet time or quiet time in the morning. And I felt like for a little bit of time, I felt kind of guilty because I'm not a morning person, but all the super spiritual people that I know were like up at 5 a.m., like having their quiet time. And first of all, I don't really do well with quiet times. And second of all, I don't do well in the mornings. And so I'm forcing myself to do something that I'm not really getting the most out of. And so one time it dawned on me that Jesus didn't set this meeting. You know, I did. I'm like, sorry, God, I didn't get up. But God isn't like telling me I have to get up at five and do it this way. God just wants me to be with him all times. So when you wrote about this, I was like, yes. So talk to me about sometimes the loud times. Talk to me about the times with Jesus that don't... Friends, I want to tell you about one of Christian and I's favorite snacks, Magic Spoon. Y'all, healthy is just boring, isn't it? But Magic Spoon brings some life to your cereal game. And also, it's so healthy with none of the bad stuff. So you got to love that, right? Not boring, but also fun. It's amazing as a midnight snack, right before bed. Also for the morning, like a typical cereal or maybe even an after workout snack because it has protein. Get this. There is zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four four net grams of carbs in each serving. There's also only 140 calories per serving, and it's also friendly to everyone. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb, but they also, like I said, do not have it fun-free. It's all good. They also have incredible available flavors that you can build your own box with. You can build your own custom box with flavors like cocoa, frosted, fruity, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. It's truly the best snack ever. Like I said, you can eat it in the morning and night after a workout with delicious flavors. Christian tends to like the chocolatey ones. I'm a sucker for anything cookies and cream. Or I also really like the fruity ones too, like the blueberry. It's healthy. It's delicious. It's just a great snack. So go to magicspoon.com slash woe. Grab your custom bundle of cereal today. And be sure to use my promo code woe at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money back, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash woe and use my code woe, that's W-H-O-A at checkout to save $5 off. Go enjoy. Oh, heck yeah. I, it's been 25 years since I had a quiet time. Like mine are <laughs> super loud. I'll just think of everything I wrote down. I've taken a couple notes just while you and I are talking. Um, but that whole idea is to take notes about what's going on, like actually live a no- noteworthy life. It just means like mm. be so engaged, be so curious. Uh, Philippians 2.20 takes such a genuine interest in other people that you're taking notes. And then in the morning or whenever it is that you find that time to talk to God, check it against scripture. Go full Apostle Mm. Paul on it to say, I know it sounds right, but is it actually true? So you can put that dollop of truth and then the obedience is the actually uh, go do something about it. Um, I can tell you, we have a, I think a mutual friend, he's had a bad diagnosis and he was down at MD Anderson uh, to find Mm. out what it was going to look like for the balance of Mm -hmm. his life. And so I was flying down there to be with him and um, I'm reading and James, it says, are you sick? Like get the elders to come anoint you with oil and Sadie, that is so not part of my faith tradition. Like, and I, but I'm (laughs) older than dirt. So I figure that I qualify (laughs) for this thing. So I thought, well, I'll go to a grocery store. I'll get some Wesson and then I'll just like, you know, 
do that. Uh, but there's no <laughs> grocery stores by the hospital. But get this, there was a Burger King. And so I, yes. I told the guy what I'd been reading and the guy at the fry machine, he gave me some of the oil from the fry machine. I'm walking no through way. the lobby of, looking like I'm holding my own urine sample. And I found <laughs> my friend and he went into that MRI machine, smelled like a bag of French fries. And I oh, realized yes. that's what obedience looks like. I don't get it. It's not part of something I've done before. But if God said it, man, I'm just going to try to do it. And he said, deal with insecure, creepy people like me. Like like me. I'm that guy. Yeah. Like I'm insecure. Yeah. I'm often misunderstood. Do you get misunderstood very often? Totally. Yes. Heck yeah. Totally. I think we all do, right? Oh, they killed like, Jesus. I mean, what a, yes. what's a bad day for you? Like, so yeah. when it happens, I'm not surprised by that. Um, somebody asked me, actually, it was recently, and it, um, they said, are you watering down the gospel? And I actually said, I, yes. Like, you know, I want to mm. make it for thirsty people. Like, I would wow. hang a salt lick at the end of every pew just so people would be thirsty for Christ again, that they wouldn't mm. just come to agree with them. They wouldn't come to be informed. They wouldn't come to be inspired. They'd come to worship. Like, I want people yeah. to be that thirsty again. And I want to start yeah. with me. I'm not trying to figure out wow. everybody else's stuff. I want to be like, I want to cultivate that thirst, but with a, a, a very reformed, accurate view of scripture. To say, yeah. I, I want it, if he said it, I'm going to do it, even though it feels a little weird. Yeah. Wow. That's so good, Bob. That's so, so good. And I love that, you know, here we have it, you saying you haven't had a quiet time in forever, but it seems like you're more in love with Jesus than ever. And so I'm not in any way, shape or form bashing quiet times. I think that is needed. I think that is beautiful. And I think that Jesus set that example that he would get up early and he would go and be with the Lord. And it is always a good thing to be with the Lord. But there is something really beautiful to not just making it a time, like a 15 minute, a 20 minute, but a 24 seven thirst for God. And I think that's what I hear you saying. And it's just beautiful when you live your life like that, because that's the richest it, it gets when you're constantly thirsting for the Lord. Yeah, I think there's some time that you and Christian have that are really beautiful and quiet and sitting by the fire and all that. But I bet as you guys were getting to go deeper and deeper levels, I think there was a lot of conversations going on and there was a totally. lot of laughter and there was a lot of like, yep. no way. And yeah. that kind of thing. I'm not saying just yippee skippy because I know you guys talked about hard stuff and important yeah. stuff and stuff that you didn't understand. I love it. In Mark nine, it's a dad like me. And he says, I believe just help my disbelief. And so yeah. some people see it's binary, you either believe or you don't believe. And here's yeah. a guy getting real saying, I got some stuff I believe and help me with the parts that I don't just have my arms around. I'm trying to get a handle on yeah. it. And if we could get vulnerable and real enough, do you know when Jesus in three years, he asked 307 questions and he only answered wow. three. Is that crazy? Wow. That uh, is crazy. Three years. He only had, one of them was a lawyer like me. He said, "What's the big commandment?" And he said, "Love God with your heart, soul, and mind, and love your wow. neighbor, even the guy with the dreads." And the second <laughs> one was, "Will you teach us how to pray?" And he said, hmm. "Yes, I will." Our Father. Wow. And you know. And the third one was in front of Pilate. He said, "So I hear you're the King of the Jews." And he said, "Yes, I am." <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I love that. So That's if somebody awesome. asks you a question and you don't have an answer, say, I've already given my three answers. Ask me in three yes. years. Yes. <laughs> That's so good. I love that so much. You actually did talk about just some of the hard aspects of faith in the book. You said, faith is having the guts to ask the questions about your beliefs, knowing that God's love is big and patient enough to cradle us in our disbeliefs. And so um, have there ever been moments in your life that you've had to really ask God those those big questions and from asking those big questions where do you feel like that led you to a place with Jesus yeah I think of a person that uh, I loved a lot that lived across the street I mean some people that have read my books know her as Carol that's why Carol, I still wear yes. a crazy Red Sox hat even though I've never been to a baseball game because it was her hat <laughs> 
And I just, yeah. every time I think of that, I think love my neighbor and when she went home to heaven, I'm like, I just, I got some questions around that. I'm not mad. I'm sad. Uh, but I got some questions and I think just this side of eternity, there's going to be some stuff that I just don't understand. What That's I right, want us yeah. to do is figure out what you don't know, where you're just not there yet. And so yeah. I love that. Uh, Lindsay was teaching kindergarten and she said mm -hmm. uh, they don't get grades like ABC. It's like they've mastered the topic um, or N for not yet. <laughs> they get an M or an N. And I think on some things with my faith, I'd say I'm an N. Like I'm just yeah. not yet. I'm not there. And I think that had Ananias and Sapphira uh, done that just to say, mm -hmm. I want to be generous. I'm just not all the way there. Yeah. He was more generous than I've ever been. It said he gave away everything almost. <laughs> yeah, and almost. chilling words from the apostles. You haven't lied to men. You've lied to God. And so I want to own that, that sometimes this appearance, a subtle pressure that uh, people listening might feel, that you might feel, mm -hmm. that I might feel, that we have to appear that we're at a place that we're not there. Just say, like, I'm not there yet. But you know what? Yeah. My prayer is that God would help my disbelief. Uh, maybe wow. somebody who's really wounded you to say, I can't believe that happened. What happened is you just got your feelings hurt. And I want to yep. say, what's the most generous? The most generous explanation is they are really good people and they didn't mean to. What's the yep. most realistic explanation? I probably need to own some of that. Uh, but yeah. there's enough that's true in that. What's the most optimistic? Jesus could change me. Hmm, That's good. So good, Bob. Everything you say is just very hopeful. And so thank you for that. Uh, the last thing I want to ask you about was a quote in the book that I thought was so good and so needed. It says, sometimes we are so busy looking up and looking forward, trying to figure out the next moves in our lives or looking backwards at all the places we've been that we don't look down and figure out where we actually are. <laughs> and that was so good and so true. And so I, I just want to ask you, how do you stay in the moment in life? You know, there yeah. are so many distractions. How do you stay in the moment that you're in? Oh, this is such a great case. Her. The fun part is your mom was at this thing. I think she was that. Yeah, I yeah she was. Uh, there's we've got a water tower up at the Oaks, and it's really I bet it's sixty feet tall. And they said this last scene that we were gonna do of this thing. I was gonna take all these helium balloons and release them from the top of the water tower. So it had to do with balloons. So I'm like in. But when I got to the water tower, I'm looking at these little like rebar handles going up the side of this thing, and the wind's blowing forty, and I'm thinking. What if I fall off of this and maybe I can land on the balloons? And I'm standing at that water tower looking up for a solid five minutes, figuring out all my plans. Something catches my eye. I look down. There's a coiled rattlesnake at my feet. No. <laughs> That'll keep you oh, regular. Oh my. Uh, and I had been so busy making all my plans about all the moves. I was going to do this and this and this. Think of getting out of college maybe and saying, I'm going to do this and this and this who I'm marrying and when and where we live and la, 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 all that, that you're not where your feet are. And I learned that Ooh, phrase from you guys wow. in the South, like be where your feet are, like just assess circumstantially, like where am I? What's at my mm -hmm. feet before I start getting distracted by all my big plans? Uh, and wow. I was actually, I am so glad that there was a Robertson, like not at my side or she would get bit, <laughs> but, but like to have like uh, these people in your life, people that you trust, people that you love, people that ground you people that help mm. you be where your feet are and to say yeah. sometimes it's just a kind word to just look around hey tell mm. me think about that the first conversation god had with adam and eve and he told them what not to eat the second mm. conversations when he they actually did what he said not to do and the <laughs> words for him where are you i love mm. that i don't think god was confused i think he was saying where yeah. are we now that it got really yeah, weird, like, where are we? And what a great conversation to have with yourself uh, to get be where your feet are. Where am I right now on faith and relationships and the tricky stuff? And then where does God want to take me? Uh, and he wants me to mm -hmm. take me towards hurting, lonely, isolated people. 
Man, that's so good, Bob. Well, if you're listening today to the podcast, I just encourage you, go back about 15 seconds and listen to the questions that Bob just asked. Um, Actually, like you said, camp out there for a minute. Answer these questions because I think by giving yourself some of these answers, you can be where your feet are. You can sit there and be planted in the space that you're in and not miss the moment. Bob, I'm so glad that you shared that story. And it's so funny you said you're glad Robertson was there. And I will say my mom would be the best. My mom's the best one for a friend, but she's probably the worst worst Robertson in the case scenario that you have a snake uh, you might want a different Robertson for that um, and it's not me either but gosh Bob we love you our family loves you we're so for you and um, just huge shout out to you for this new book an amazing accomplishment your books are incredible and guys if you haven't already bought it go buy Undistracted capture your purpose and rediscover your joy today Bob thank you again for being on my podcast it's always just a joy Thanks. Thanks a million. Blessings on you and all the people listening. Like, just don't just agree, but as Sadie was saying, just go do something. And uh, and God's going to show up. Yep. So good.